All right, so this is a helpful video for part two of the 233 lesson with Wireshark. And it started off with like the whole broadcast thing, and it says, Who has this IP address? And then they'll respond, Check with this number. So basically, after a broadcast, and, so, and you know how to find your destination, before the two computers can communicate, they have to do this little handshake to make sure they know, well, they're first of all, they're talking to the right person and that the other person's listening to them. Because if you just started a conversation and the person had their earbuds in and didn't even hear you, which I do in class sometimes, um, it's not good. It doesn't lead to good communication. So they go through this handshake. Um, and I don't really like this one as much. What I would describe it as since the real handshake is sin sin ack ack and we'll talk about what those mean in a second what it's more like is like if i were introducing myself to someone and said i'm kevin that's your first sync the other person says two things they say hi kevin i'm john you know so not only do they acknowledge my name but then they say their own name so that's kind of like a double move and then my last move while we're shaking hands is saying, hi, John, nice to meet you, right? So really, the first one is, I'm Kevin. The second move has a double part, hi, Kevin, I'm John. And the last move is, hi, John. And then we can start our conversation. Um, the handshake's complete. So it's really a three-step process. Um, if you remember in the upper part, um, we found where this... Uh, this 192.64 is by getting its MAC address. And basically, there's so many packets in this giant P capture file, we need to search just the ones that have the address we care about. So the address we cared about was the .64 one. So one of the search features you can do is you can filter out everything by IP address. You just gotta use this uh, IP dot address and then equals equals, and then you can type in the IP address um, with the 64. It goes green if it recognizes it, and it cut down a lot of your um, boxes. See, every one of them has that 64, and it might be the destination sometimes, it might be the source sometimes, but you'll always see that 192, 168, the one we filtered by. Um, so that's one thing we can do. Now we're going to look until we see the whole handshake go down. And the handshake, like I said, goes as a sin, that stands for synchronize. The other one goes as a sin, synchronize and acknowledge. And the last one goes as acknowledge. So it's sin, sin, ack, hack. And we need to find out where they happen. So let's see which two um, computers, which two IP addresses are going to start communicating. Now if you look at all these, these are acts. Don't be fooled by them. The whole handshake starts with a sin. So you gotta scroll and scroll and scroll until you get this sync. That's where the handshake starts. I don't see it, I don't see it. I'm starting to doubt myself here. Oh, it's not real. Oops. Hold on. I think I went too fast. Uh, by the way, where am I looking? I'm looking in the info section. Here we go. The info section is where it's going to reside. There's your first sin. And which two computers are communicating? My 192.168.164 and the 64.14.236. This starts the process. It's like, hey, this is my name. And then this one goes, see how there? it's the same two computers? Now it's responding, so it sources this guy. It's like, hey, this... Hi, buddy. This is my name. And then the very next line, you can see it switches back to the first guy. And it says, well, hello there. Nice to meet you. And then they, then they can start communicating after that pretty freely. And you can see, like, the next line is them just, oh, there's a, the word hello um, in the info. So it's got, it's got some, that's the whole breakdown. So when you're looking for that, you might not have scrolled far enough. Uh, write down the two IP addresses in your notes. How long did it take? Remember, you have the ability to see um, 
you have the ability to click on here and see the arrival time of when this one arrived and how long it took to do the whole handshake. I'm guessing you know it's going to be pretty quick, so you'll have to do a little subtraction there. Um, all right. So uh, anyway, there's there's a way to just look for to filter something by its source or its destination because we filtered by IP address. Um, that just got it whether it's the source or the destination. There's another way to filter, and that's if you just want it to be the source, you do ip.src, and you can s filter something um, by source, too, which is pretty cool. Um, so anyway, um, good times. Let's check anything else we need to look at. So we're going to switch to IP source instead of address, so we can just look at messages sent um, from you know the one IP address in our network, and that's what Wireshark's doing. And then we're going to look for um, traffic that's a higher level of security with this TLS transport layer security um, transmission. So it says find the first TLS v1 packet near the top of the packet list that comes from the host. That's why, since it said when it comes from the host, um, that's why we want to change this to source and not just IP address. Now if you look at it, you might notice here, if you're wondering is that the first one or did any happen earlier, you could scroll up, but another cool thing you can do is if you click on protocol, it sorts by you know the, the type of uh, data. So you can confirm that 85 really is the first one. You can shrink this down if you don't like it. You could remove it completely, but I always wonder if I'm gonna need it later, so I just shrink it down. Um, now it says, you know, something like, in the packets details, remember that's your main pane, uh, expand the sockets layer entry. And then, so let's see what that looks like. Here it is. Ooh, we didn't have that before. And then, let's see what goes. Oh, type handshake. Okay. So, anyway, um, the handshake protocol, client hello. So basically, it makes sure it's it's an extra secure handshake. Um, the first one, the SYN ACK thing, is unsecured, and the secondary one is a little more secure because um, it's on a different type of protocol that has a little more security. So, um, yeah, basically it uses encrypted data in there. So would it be harder to spoof or fake one of these handshakes rather than just the other handshake with the sin x why would why might this one um, be a little harder to fake and if i wanted to if i click the number it sorts them back by number um, if i looked at that original sin act thing and um, it doesn't have that layer you know, it just has regular transmission protocol with the sin flag uh, where you're syncing up, and then if you look at 85, we got, this is the um, the more secure one afterwards. It's got, you know, it has all that stuff from before, but it has an extra thing on it here, um, which is called a secure sockets layer. Um, and, you know, it's another, it's basically another layer, and it's encrypted too, so it makes it a little better. Okay, so another step we're going to try here. On step three, we can just look for web content. And since the web is HTTP protocol, we can just use that filter on our Wireshark and look for um, web's, web protocol that's been sent. Um, and then it says, you know, find the first packet that has an HTTP request for get HTTP 1.1. So if we look in here, it looks like this one has it. And not only does it have like the frame and the internet, ethernet and the protocol, if you look in here, it's got all sorts of other stuff because it's now um, an HTTP file. So if we look in the, the hypertext transfer protocol, the HTTP part, open it up, 
we can see what's going on with this tiny packet that was sent. Okay, on 10,000 whatever bytes. Um, and then we're going to expand it full request URI so we can kind of see uh, that it was a web page. URI is kind of like a URL. Where is that? Um, let's see. Oh, wait, I needed one with a get. Sorry, I was on the wrong one. The get one. So on here, if we open up the HTTP, we can scroll down here to the full request URI and see what that is. And then you can click on that website and or visit that website, type it in, see what kind of website it is. It asks you to look it up. Um, and you can look at what the purpose of that website is that's being transferred in a packet. And then the last thing is, you know that JavaScript was a way we could uh, inject some code and do some bad stuff. You know, that's what hackers like to use on websites. So if we use um, if we use HTTP content type as a filter, we can check out for web page content that's on there. Let's kill that one. Boom. And type in the HTTP dot content underscore type. Boom. Okay. And if we look at this one, um, <clears throat> we can find a packet that shows its text or HTML, not a GIF or a ping or unidentified. So let's look at what packets we have here. Um, I'm going to shrink this down again, make this a little bigger so I can see it. Um, so yeah, here's one with text and HTML. Then it says uh, to go to the line-based text data section. So we'll check that out. It's probably in here. Oh wait, there it is. Line-based text data. We can look at you know some of this stuff. Oh look, look what this is script window.google so you can start to see things with script in it and javascript oh here's another one um what's the where's the beginning of this script so you got a few like scripts and you can you can search for uh search for malicious code built in with wireshark if something went bad in packets you can look inside of them and see if you can find you know, any JavaScript being run and see if it's malicious. So here's a little JavaScript text with a function. You know, maybe it's not bad, maybe it is. Um, but that's that's one thing you can find in there. Um, anyway, so good stuff there. And then, so you should know a few things after you're done with all this. What broadcasting is. How you can see handshakes um, to tell if remote hosts are safe and secure. That means are you using that extra layer of defense with the with the encrypted handshake? And then um, does web content have no vulnerabilities or exploits? Which means you can check out the websites with that URI thing, and um, you can also look inside and see if there's any bad javascript that's running um, so that's a lot that's basically all the stuff up top now you're going to do some attacks next on the on the next lesson so give that a whirl hope that helped if you were stuck it's pretty straightforward all right talk to you later